Hate is a strong word. I don't usually use it, but there's one thing in Minecraft that I kind of, sort of, maybe hate. Okay, maybe not hate, but really, really dislike. I mean, I can't actually hate them because they're just kind of really stupid. For instance, I left this village for like three Minecraft days and they nearly eradicated themselves by walking off a cliff. So yeah, not hate, but sometimes I wish I could just never interact with them again and still reap the rewards of their completely OP mechanics. So this is exactly what I decided to do. I'm going to design and build a custom, fully automated villager trading hall. So the only interaction I need to have with the villagers is when I am directly exploiting them. So there are a lot of trading halls out there and a bunch of popular automated ones, but I've never quite seen a trading hall exactly like what I am looking for. And even if I did, honestly, for me, the fun part is figuring out how to design my own, not just copy and pasting some other design. So let's jump straight into it. What I'm thinking starts with a basic trading hall setup, a breeder with a maturing chamber, because baby villagers are the absolute worst, which then automatically sends them to their cell. Once in their cell, I want everything to happen behind closed doors. So if we want to re-educate them, we hit a button and poof, they're zombies. If I want to dispose of them, I hit a button and poof, they're sent to live on the farm upstate. And if I happen to want to reorganize them, I hit a few buttons and poof, they swap cells. These are the base functions I'd like to have. The additional challenge for this is that I would like to have no visible redstone or minecarts if possible. So let's get right into it. I'm going to start out in a creative world to get a functioning design before we try to do anything in the single player world. To start with, I should probably explain what I'm looking to do on a high level basis to give a little bit of context. My thought process is that there will be a kind of control room area, which will control the behind the scenes of the entire system. So the villagers will normally stay in their cells, but when we want to do something with them, we will hit a button and it will remove them from their cell, put them in a minecart, which will then send them to what I am calling the temporary storage system. This will be in the control room. So I'm thinking that the villagers will show up here with space for maybe like 10 villagers. We can interact with them to identify them. And then from here, we have a number of things we can do. First is the indoctrination system, which zombifies them and then sends them back to the temporary storage. Second, we can quote unquote fire them, literally. And finally, we can send them back to the first open cell available in the trading hall, which means that we can organize the villagers relatively easily. For this to work properly, we need our villager cell to work in a specific way. In the processing portion of the hall, the villagers will always be in a minecart. But around the cell, we can use water to move them and get them in and out of the minecart. What I mean is something like this. We have the villager in their cell. We can then drop them into the system and pick them up with a minecart. After processing, they come back and onto a powered activator rail, which discharges them and the water pushes them back into their cell. So my thinking is that when we drop the villager, the activator rail will be toggled on. We can then either wait for the villager to come back to its cell, which will toggle the activator rail off, or we can manually toggle the activator rail off and close the cell. This combined with the villager temporary storage will allow us to organize up to say 10 villagers at a time as long as we know the cell fill order. So let's get right into building the cell system. This will be our base template. We want the villagers to be one block apart. So it's really a two wide design because this side and this side will be shared between the two villagers. We can use a note block with an observer because it's a pretty nice looking block in this application. For our drop function, we're just going to use a sticky piston powered by a torch. And then we just set it up so that when we hit the note block, it is going to power this block through the repeater to this torch, which is going to retract the piston for a short time. This was the easy part. The toggle for the activator rail is maybe the most complex part but still not that bad. I'm thinking that we use a RS NOR latch and the simplest is a dropper dropper latch. Basically, it's just two droppers which pass an item back and forth. When you activate one of the droppers, it will switch the output to the comparator of the opposite dropper and vice versa. 
In this application, I really just need one dropper for the activator rail. So it will switch between off and on. On is what I'm calling the open state for the cell and off will be the closed state of the cell because then a villager won't be able to go in the cell if the minecart passes over the activator rail. All right, so this is a pretty quick attempt. Basically, when you hit this note block, we have an observer chain coming back and powering this block here. It will then power this dust, which is going to eventually make this open like we talked about before. This block being powered is also going to switch our RS NOR latch so that this comparator will power the activator rail. So let's try it out real quick. You see it drops the villager. It's going to come back here and be discharged. You see that when he's discharged, we have a string here, which the observer is facing into. So then it will switch the RS NOR latch back into a closed position, i.e. the activator rail is off. This works decently well, but there is a problem that I can't really figure out, and that is the toggle function. Right now, the only way to close a cell is by sending a villager to it. This really limits our flexibility in sorting. I would like to toggle the cell open and closed manually in case I want to say skip a cell or something like that. All right, so I played with this a little bit and think I've come up with a solution. With this RS NOR latch, it's hard to toggle on and off because you close the cell from the top and you open it from the bottom. So the wiring is a little bit complicated and hard to keep in a one wide design. The solution I came up with is to scrap the RS NOR latch altogether and use something that is better for this application anyway, a T flip flop. A RS NOR latch, as explained before, has two inputs and two outputs. In comparison, a T flip flop has one input and one output that toggles. So when I power it, it will turn on and then if I power it again, it will turn off. So you can understand why this is good for our application. When I hit our first pulse in, it will toggle on, and our second pulse will toggle it off. But you might be wondering why we didn't use a T flip flop in the first place. Well, there is a good reason. In this application, we're using a string with an observer to detect when the villager will come back, which will result in two observer pulses. One when the villager enters the string and one when it exits. With a RS NOR latch, this is okay because two pulses to one side functions effectively as one pulse. With a T flip flop, two pulses will result in the output turning off and then back on again with the second pulse. So with a T flip flop, we need to turn two pulses into one. We can easily do this by adding a piston here with a movable block on top of it and then a one tick repeater out. The first pulse will power through the block and push the block into the upward position. The second pulse will not power through it and will only pull the block back down. The circuit has many names and applications. In this application, I think it's called a pulse divider, but I'm not really sure. I do know though that it works for what we want it to do. So this is the working version, fully functional. And I was even able to make it a little bit smaller by putting this block directly next to the note block, making it a little bit more compact. I'm pretty happy with this, but there is a small problem. It well, slowly kills the villagers which normally I would say is a good thing. But when I have to keep doing this time and time again, get the right trade, I'm going to refrain from accidentally killing them if I can. So at this point, I kind of hit a wall. I had to take a break and work on some other parts of the trading hall for a while, but I knew that I really needed to solve this problem. So I did what I think is usually best in these types of situations, yet another perspective. Two of my friends, Megatronic and Integral Zero, have a lot of experience with these types of systems. So I knew they'd be very helpful with this type of issue. The main problem is how to get rid of this piston system here and reduce the height by those two blocks. Almost immediately they saw the answer, which was surprisingly pretty simple. Basically with our T flip flop, we normally power this corner block in order to activate all of the droppers. When turning the signal off though, we are just sending an item from this dropper into this corner dropper. So it's overkill to power all three droppers. We just need to activate this bottom dropper, which we can do by powering a block underneath it. I know it's really nerdy, but I gotta say, I love stuff like this. These little details make all the difference. 
By doing this, we kind of add a RS nor latch function to the T flip block. Now double pulsing the block is okay because it can only be turned off once, like an RS nor latch. So here is the final version. It's fully functioning. We have our manual toggle, our villager detection, and the drop is only three blocks, so it won't damage the villager. Oh, and we added a light, which will help a lot with sorting. This is the solution I think I'm going to go with, at least for the time being. So after a lot of work, I finally put together a full working model. It does everything I desire, and although it's not super simple, it also isn't too complex. So my plan was to go through all the subsystems also, but this video is already getting quite long, and I did want to make some single player progression rather than just be in creative mode the entire episode. So I think I'm going to save the rest of the explanation for the next episode after it's built in the survival world. I have to give huge props to Megatronic and Integral Zero for their help. I knew they were the guys to go to because they designed their own trading hall that is really nice. I have to be honest and say that before I got this far with the trading hall, I barely looked at their video. That's not to spoil my own experience. But now that I've solved all the main problems, I checked it out and wow. It's a really nice design and much more polished than mine. Please go and check out their channels and consider subscribing. These guys were a huge help and are really awesome creators. They deserve your support. But with all this said, let's get back to the single player world so we can make at least a little bit of progression. All right, so I have done a tiny bit of work here. Nothing huge, but that will be coming soon. Last episode, we started repopulating with these two guys and started setting up some of the trades we need. I've continued that with getting a couple more villagers and trying to get the bare minimum trades that I need before setting up the large trading hall. I also made two tiny farms, a little chicken farm and a stone slash cobble generator. I have a certain affection for these chicken farms since it was the first farm I ever made and so I always end up making one. I have to say though, making these two small farms really got me rolling and motivated for the series again. It sounds silly, but once I made these, I got back in the headspace to play single player more. I had a comment saying something like, hey man, it's been six months, are you continuing? And I always planned on it, but with my iron farm video taking off, I got a bit overwhelmed with everything going on all at once, including an already really busy personal life. But once I got building these farms, and especially this stone generator, I kind of took a deep breath and was like, aha, all right, let's go, and was in that headspace to play single player again. So now I have pretty big plans. The trading hall is going to be a lot of work, but I already have plans for the future episodes and some stuff I'm really excited about. So before we end this episode, there is one more thing that I want to get done. I have the basic villager trading, but as you can see, my level is 2, and my pick is almost worn out. So I have no XP source, and I really need to solve that problem. So instead of rushing to the end, or using a spawner, which in general just really suck, I've decided that I want to try to make a farm that I've never tried, but always wanted to make. A bad omen slash pillager farm. It's maybe not the best XP farm, but it should be pretty decent. And eventually I want to make a raid farm, so I figured, why not? So I'm going to hop right into it. This is just a random design based on some designs I saw years ago. It's not anyone's, and I wouldn't know who to credit. But it's also not an original concept. Anyways, it's not perfect, but it works. And it's not too bad XP for a starter, pre-enderman, or gold farm. The basis of design isn't too complicated. The kill chamber is elevated to lift the despawn sphere above the ground. So the spawning platform and the water streams are all in the sphere, but no other spawning places are. Then we just use double trap doors to trick the pillagers into thinking they can get to the golem and push them into a bubble column, drop them to half a heart, and then, well, murder. It's very simple, but not super effective. For instance, any pillager that spawns here won't pathfind to the golem. So I will block these spaces, at least for the time being. My thought is that eventually I'm going to make it into some sort of tower or something, but I don't know. I'm not a very good builder, but you can't learn if you don't try, so why not? Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Next video, we will finalize the trading hall design and build it in survival. 
But thank you so much for watching and good bye. Oh, and P.S. Sub to Mega Zero. And I guess to me as well, if you haven't already. Banana.